I'm, I'm married to a white woman. That means I have, I'm regularly around groups of white people who didn't expect to have a black guy in the room, her family. Uh, <laughs> huh. Sweet potato pie, you say? <laughs> Crazy. That's, that's almost a direct quote. Uh, <laughs> but they tried the pie. Uh, Did you make the pie? I f- yeah, I made a pie. It was, it was, I felt like it was my black responsibility to make a sweet potato pie just to be that's like, fair. pumpkin, really? Why don't you try this? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I did. And they talk, it's, I did it once, and we still talk about it. It's like a family. It's a core memory if you see Inside Out. Remember that time Kamau made a pie? <laughs> yeah, the time Kamau made a pie. Uh, and I feel like the, the, the thing that I, and I feel, I, maybe this is what you're, not what you're talking about, but I feel like the responsibility to me is like when the white people who are conversant with talking about white supremacy and, and, have, and, uh, and, white, and white privilege and dismantling, and they sort of get very caught, and it's a thing where they feel bad, and they feel empowered by the conversation. That power is for you to take to your family. That's what the power is for. It ain't to talk to another person of color. That you get, we, that power that comes out of is for you to have difficult conversations with all your people you went to high school with who are your Facebook friends. And that's where I feel like the problem, the conversation doesn't yeah. go a lot of time. It yeah. sort of goes, we had a good conversation. And then it's sort of, I feel good. Right. You want to have a kale smoothie? Yeah, my uh, black friend seemed to think that everything I had to say was very intelligent and yeah, perceptive. I made a lot of good points. And actually, going and having those conversations with your family your racist, backward-ass family <laughs> will actually do some of that work of decentralizing you and making you not feel like it's all about you because it's difficult. It's not affirming. It feels shitty, you know, to go and be like hitting people with statistics that they categorically reject even though they're true because they reject the empirical in favor of the anecdotal because that's how they allow their racist attitudes to continue to rule their lives. That's incredibly frustrating. And you do that for a little while, you won't feel like patting yourself on the back because you will make little to no progress. <laughs> but me and my wife, her, like there was parts of her family who weren't all, they, it's not that they, it's that weird thing about like, we, clan racist is the extreme level of racist. There's also just like, I didn't expect a black guy to be here every Thanksgiving. And there was people, there was sort of a, just a weird like, a, and my wife took it upon herself to have those conversations that I couldn't have with them because I was the angry black guy. And so she said, thank you over there, uh, you're my favorite. Uh, she <laughs> took it upon herself to have those conversations that she didn't necessarily, wasn't excited about confronting members of her family who she loved and never saw through that light because she knew that's the only way to make this happen. And we made legitimate, real progress. 